Thanks for joining me here for the Daily Bread Bible Study. This is day 241 for Friday, August 28th, 2020, focusing on Ezekiel chapters 18 through 20. Now we see Ezekiel uh, has been focused on justice, and in this section today, we will see justice come up again. Uh, mainly with blessings promised on those who maintain justice and punishment upon those who pervert justice, especially in relationship with God. Now, God, via Ezekiel, writes about justice for those who are righteous, saying in verse 5 of chapter 18, If a man is righteous and does what is lawful and right, skipping to verse 9, he shall surely live, says the Lord. This righteousness is defined in, in between verses 5 and 9 as avoiding idolatry, avoiding improper heterosexual relations, avoiding economic injustice, taking care of the poor and needy, executing true justice in legal matters, and obeying the statutes that govern God's society. So, all of these are just very good things to have. Uh, trustworthy relationships in worship, especially to God. Trustworthy relationships uh, with those uh, that you have sexual relations with. Um, trustworthy relationships around economics, which is the, comes from the Greek word oikos and nomos, which means basically the rule of the house, laws that govern and maintain for uh, people to have a strong home life and stable home life and food provided for on their tables and all of that, um, which also leads to taking care of the poor and needy. Then executing true justice, so not being partial to one side, especially in a way that you would, have, would be bribed or you would get some benefit from being able to give improper justice to somebody who with power and wealth. Um, and then just a general note to obey statutes and all that that govern God's society. God then restates this criteria, just as I restated it once, but instead God does it two more times. God wants to make it very clear that these acts of righteousness matter greatly. These acts also apply only to the one who obeys or disobeys them. Thus, sons will not be judged according to the acts of their fathers. Each person will be held accountable for their actions. This, in part, is kind of good news for Ezekiel 18.32. I have no pleasure in death for anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. So all of these rules, this insistence on following and being obedient to the statutes, it's really because God wants a healthy society. God wants people to uh, promote justice. God wants things to go well and have um, you know, people be able to go to their homes in peace and have their needs met and to just accept um, not being greedy for things that they can't have, but just accepting that for what they have, what they do have, and appreciating it. Now, Ezekiel chapter 19 continues where, really, where Jerusalem kind of failed. And it has two images that are connected with this failure, a lion that is, that is imprisoned and a vine that has lost its source of water. In Ezekiel 19, verse 8, the nations set upon him, the lion, from provinces all around, and they spread their net over him, and he was caught in their pit. With hooks they put him in a cage and brought him to the king of Babylon. And they brought him in custody so that his voice should uh, be heard no more among the mountains of Israel. In verse 12, the imagery of a vine. Um, but if it was plucked up in fury, cast down to the ground, an east wind dried it up and its fruit was stripped off. Its strong stem was withered and fire consumed it. Both of these illustrations end with a form of failure. Judah is now captive and plucked up 
from their roots in Jerusalem. In Ezekiel chapter 20, our last section for today, we see that the, in the seventh year of King Zedekiah, this is the year of the utter destruction of Jerusalem, where you know, the siege of Jerusalem happened earlier. King Jehoiachin was taken away, but King Zedekiah was put up as this ruler in the meantime to pay tribute. But in this seventh year is when things come to a head. Now, as things are getting bad too, the elders come to Ezekiel for guidance. In Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 3, Mortal, speak to the elders of Israel and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, why are you coming to consult me? As I live, says the Lord God, I will not be consulted by you. Ezekiel is then um, called to reprimand them for being like their ancestors, unfaithful to their relationship with God. In Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 6, On that day I swore to them that I would bring them out of the land of Egypt into a land that I had searched out for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most glorious of all lands. And I said to them, Cast away the detestable things your eyes feast on, every one of you, and do not defile yourself with idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Unfortunately, these list of offenses including or include these idols. And among in Ezekiel 20, verse 16, they rejected my ordinances and did not observe my statutes, profaned my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. This idolatry, this pursuit of their own interests, this pursuit of things like greed or things like... Um, um, just trying to take, uh, you know, steal from their neighbors, these conspiring, all these sorts of ways, these activities to try and come out ahead over their neighbors instead of trying to strengthen up the whole community. This is what God is critiquing here. They consistently searched to make sacrifices in high places to other gods in hopes that making these sacrifices would benefit them as well. In Ezekiel 20, verse 35, thus God will bring, bring you into the wilderness of the peoples, and there I will enter into judgment with you face to face. As I entered into judgment with your ancestors in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will enter into judgment with you, says the Lord God. The judgment will be the Babylonian exile, and all this will finally bring humility to the people of Judah and in verse uh, 43 of chapter 20, you shall loathe yourself for all the evils you have committed. Repentance is good. Uh, turning back from ways that are acting unjustly is good. Keeping, staying faithful to relationships, whether you're in a, um, whether your partner is of the same gender or a different gender, it doesn't matter. Uh, your, the relationship that you have with one another um, and the promise, especially around marriage, in, in order to be faithful to one another and to God, all of these things um, are very good things to keep. They're ones that create for a trustworthy society that we can live in. They're one in which ways that we uh, live can provide peace to one another, help, healing, concern for our neighbors, all of these things are parts of justice that we must not overlook and must be attending to. So I wish you well as you are seeking to attend to all the things God calls you to, to seek to live in harmony and justice and peace with those around you, to remember that it is a gift from God to have your needs met, and I hope that you have your needs met each and every day. This ends our Daily Bread Bible study. Until next time.